Thank you, Colleen. Uh, ministry opportunities, uh, they're listed in your bulletin. Uh, well, by the way, welcome to the Legal United Methodist Church. And uh, Nancy's, Pastor Nancy's contact information is in your bulletin. And the landline for the parsonage has changed. And her cell phone and her email are in here. Uh, we also have people on our prayer list that uh, I'd ask you to keep in prayer. They're listed on the, on the back of the bulletin. Uh, David Dewey Wright's father, Jerry, uh, and Judy Hartman. Yeah, I'm pleased to see uh, the Perkins here and Julie's here, but please continue to pray for her. John Wickland has COVID and so does uh, Bev Demick. And so if you keep them in your prayers, and also if you continue to keep Dave Ostrander in your prayers. Are there any other announcements that I have missed? Would you please rise for the call to worship? We are God's beloved people. Our Lord desires to clothe us with love and to bind us together in harmony. God desires that we bear with one another and forgive as Christ forgives. We are God's beloved people. Our first hymn is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, page 66 in your hymnal or on the board, on the wall. Please be seated and 
Having lifted our voices in praise, let us now turn our hearts to confession. Would you pray with me as printed in the bulletin or up on the wall? Merciful God, forgive us when we fail to show compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience to those in our lives. Too often we fail to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Forgive us, and only by your grace, help us to change. We pray in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, in silence, let us confess our personal sins to Almighty God. Hear the good news. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. In the name of Jesus Christ, each one of us is forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I would invite any children of any age who would like to come, um, if, if you uh, were a child, you know, 50 years ago, you're welcome to come, or, or longer ago than that, you are welcome to come to the children's time. And um, anyway, oh, great, great. Anybody else want to come? No? Okay. Okay. Hi. I'm sorry? Oh, great. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So, okay, so... And I forgot to mention it, if you have a, a penny or larger, you can bring it, and if not, come anyway. So as we put money in, in uh, our Mr. Bear Bank for folks from the Heifer Project. So, all right. So let's see, we got Jennifer and Sarah and Susie, right? All right. No, well, the, all right. So. So um, I'm going to, oops, oops, I forgot I have a, I'm mic'd up, so I've got to do some, can you hold that for a second? Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to just, not that I'm really cold, but I'm, I'm going to put a sweater on just to, you know, change it up, change it up. And, and so here we go. I'm gonna, Huh? That's not right? <laughs> oh. Okay, thanks for the encouragement. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll get it right this time. Nope. Is that right? Yeah. <gasps> oh, all right. Wow, that was tough. Oh, great. That better? Okay, I do not need this on. Okay. So, all right. So, um, do, I, I, can you remember back to the time when you were learning to dress yourself? I think it. it it's, uh, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and uh, sometimes I would do that. I wouldn't get the, the buttons in the right buttonhole, <laughs> right? And then uh, it doesn't look so good. Thank you. Um, and, and, you know, it really kind of wouldn't keep you warm either, right? If, you know, to do that. So let me, let me get down here. Okay. Here we go. That's better. All right. So, all right. Well, I could, or I could, well, that's all right. That's all right. We're, we're okay. We're okay. So anyway, so, so I long for the day when there's a whole bunch of people up here. So that'd be great. So anyway, um, 
so why did I do that? Well, and, and, and you all were, were very, you know, encouraging. Um, well, some <laughs> were encouraging. Some said, that's wrong. <laughs> Trying to help in your own way, right? So, okay, so um, when uh, we're learning to dress, we need to practice, right? And we need, to, we need some help along the way. And, and I get thinking about it, you know, and when we're, we're learning to be followers of Jesus, we need, to, we need some help sometimes too, don't we? What are some ways that, or some places that we can get some help when we're learning to follow Jesus? Hmm. Oh, yeah, reading the Bible? For sure. For sure. Sunday school? Sunday school, which starts in two weeks today? Yes. 9.30? So, um, yeah, um, you're doing one right now. You came to worship, right? Right? So that's, a, that's another way um, that we can learn how to be followers of Jesus and to encourage each other to be followers of Jesus um, and, and to uh, live the way that he wants us to live. So that's what I hope we remember today, okay? Would you pray with me? Dear God, Thank you that we can get help learning how to follow you. Thank you for the times we can come to worship and that we can read our Bible and pray anytime. You're always there to encourage us and help us to have a closer relationship with you. Thanks, God. Amen. All right. Thanks. I got it. Thank you, though. As we come to our time of prayer, do you have joys or concerns to share this morning? Linda? Okay, so um, Brian had another clear cancer test, is that right? All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. We rejoice with you. I have something, Pastor Nancy. Yes. Uh, so yesterday, the community had a celebration for Dan Fabricius's life, who passed away earlier this month. And he is a, a tremendously a gifted man who's had a tremendous impact on our community for many years. So I would ask you to uh, lift up uh, the people who are grieving and missing Mr. Fabricius. Thank you. Um, so uh, prayers for the family and friends of uh, Dan Fabricius. I wished I'd known him after all I, I read about him. So thank you for sharing that. Um, again, uh, Ed mentioned before, um, uh, Bev Dimmick uh, and John Wickland uh, are both struggling with COVID right now. Uh, John is actually a patient at Wilson. Um, so he's doing better. Talked to him yesterday. His spirits are good. But um, uh, it can't wait to bust out of the hospital for sure. Um, so, um, so 
So, and, and good to see Ruthie. I understand Ruthie was, was sick, so you're glad to see you, you back. And, and uh, a joy to have uh, the Perkins family with us this morning. So, so glad you could be here. I have a joy, just about everybody I talked to this morning said, how was your vacation? So thank you for checking in. Appreciate that. It was quiet. I didn't go anywhere. But the parsonage is a lot more settled than it was. It's not there yet, but it's a lot more settled than it was. So, um, yeah. Anybody else? Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are grateful for your presence with us here this morning as we have gathered in this sanctuary and through the wonders of technology to worship you. We are so blessed by your presence and your faithfulness. Lord, be glorified in what we offer you in this time of worship and be glorified in the ways we live our lives outside of worship. We pray for this hurting world in which we live. Lord, do a mighty work. Soften Vladimir Putin's heart, as impossible as that sounds to us. Lord, work a mighty miracle that the war in Ukraine would end. In the meantime, keep us mindful of the people of Ukraine. We just don't have a clue what it's like to live the way they're living or to have to flee for our lives. Lord, in the meantime, we are grateful for those, even in this area, who have opened their homes to Ukrainian and Afghan refugees. Bless them as they get acclimated and keep them safe. Bless the efforts of those working for peace in this world and in our country. Lord, we pray for President Biden and other world leaders that you would give them the wisdom they need in these turbulent times. We pray also for our church leaders, for our Bishop Mark Webb and our District Superintendent Bob Colva Campbell. Continue to guide pastors and congregations, especially those in transition like we are. Don't ever let us miss where you're leading us, Lord. We don't want to miss it. Keep our eyes, ears, minds, and hearts open to you at all times. Lord, we pray for those in need of your healing, touch in body, mind, spirit, relationship, or situation. And continue to remember the family of Marilyn Oaks. We pray for the family and friends of Dan Fabricius. We rejoice with Brian and his family in the clear scan. And Lord, we lift up to you, Jerry and Judy, Julie, John, and Bev, and others who we name in our hearts before you now. Help us to wear the qualities that bring glory to you and draw others closer to you, O Lord. Bring your healing upon our congregation. 
that we may be the church you have called us to be so that we may be beacons of your light, agents of your grace, and channels of your love in this place called Owego and beyond. We pray all these things in the precious and powerful name of Jesus and continue to pray as he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Knowing that all that we have and all that we are belongs to God, let us offer unto him his rightful tithe, our offerings and ourselves. Would the ushers please come forward? O oh Lord, bless and guide the use of these gifts that they may be used to further your kingdom so that more and more may put on the clothes that glorify you and come to know that you are worthy of their trust. Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
please be seated. Seventeen. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive uh, each other. Just as uh, the Lord has forgiven you, uh, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds uh, every, everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, uh, to which indeed you were called uh, in the one body, and be thankful. Uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Uh, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, uh, give thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord for the people of, of God. Thank you, Ed. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds and our actions in response be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Did you ever play dress up as a child? I remember trying to walk in my mother's high heels and I managed not to fall and hurt myself too badly. Now, I hesitate to mention this, but as a tomboy playing with my friend, I dressed up as Robin. My best friend, the boy who lived across the street, was Batman. I wore a mask. I even had a yellow cape and gloves that went almost up to my elbows. I'm not proud to admit that, so you can just forget I said that. Just prior to this morning's passage, in verses 5 through 9, uh, Paul tells the Colossians to put off the vile things of life. In fact, in verse 9, uh, in the New Revised Standard Version, Paul actually says to strip off of ourselves, or strip ourselves of, it, of our old practices and clothe ourselves with our new selves, being renewed in knowledge according to the image of our Creator. And then in this morning's passage, in verses 12 through 17 that Ed read for us, Paul tells the, the Colossians and us the things that as Christians we need to put on, those things we need to wear every day. We are to put on compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forgiveness, love, peace, wisdom, gratitude, and songs of praise to God. That's a lot to put on, isn't it? We can't put these clothes on, these clothes of compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forgiveness, love, peace, wisdom, gratitude, and songs of praise to God without help. Like I said, you know, in the children's time, when we're, we're learning to dress ourselves, we need help to get the hang of it. Gradually, with a lot of practice, we got so we could get the right button in the right buttonhole and get our left shoe on our left foot and our right shoe on our right foot. When we were learning to drive, we had to think about adjusting the seat, the mirrors, putting on the seat belt, stepping on the brake, shifting the car into drive. Right? We had to practice how far to turn the wheel when making a turn. 
and how soon we had to put on the brake to stop. And when we drive now, do we even think about those things? No. They're just automatic, right? Except maybe in the ice and snow. <laughs> we could read a book about driving, but until we actually drive and practice, 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 we don't really learn. And so it is with learning to do most anything. What is driving? Learning to dress ourselves. Or being a disciple of Jesus. Paul is saying the same thing to the Colossians and to us. Paul's letting us know that we need to practice putting on compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forgiveness, love, peace, wisdom, gratitude, and songs of praise to God. He wants us to practice putting on these things so that after a while it will just be natural. We won't even have to think about wearing them, we just will. It will be our natural response so that every day we will reflect Christ. That's the goal. I mentioned earlier we cannot strip off the clothes we shouldn't wear and put on the clothes we should wear without help. None of the clothes we are to wear will fit without us encouraging one another. None of the clothes we are to wear will fit without God's grace. None of the clothes we are to wear will fit without getting scripture inside of us. None of the clothes we are to wear will fit without prayer. And also, wearing the clothes that Paul lists in this chapter is incompatible with wearing the clothes we are to strip off, those things that are not reflective of Christ. So when we put on the clothes of compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forgiveness, love, peace, gratitude, and songs of praise to God, at the same time we must empty our closets of those things that are incompatible with the clothes of Christ we are to wear. We need to empty our closets fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, greed, idolatry, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive language, and lying. That's Paul's list in the first section of chapter 3. And fornication is generally talking about promiscuity. And passion, which is not always bad, though, is translated here as lust. So... Um, promiscuity and lust are in that in that list of things we are to shed things we are to remove from our closet here Eugene Peterson's paraphrase the message of verses 5 through 10 these are the things that we are to put off or to take off so that means killing off everything connected with that way of death, sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like whenever you like, feel like it, grabbing whatever attracts your fancy, that to life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. It's because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff not knowing any better. But you know better now. So make sure it's all gone for good. Bad temper, irritability, meanness, profanity, dirty talk. Don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. How's that? I like that. Okay. Now hear how Eugene Peterson paraphrases verses 12 through 17, what, what Ed read earlier. So chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. 
And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this often doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Yeah. Eugene Peterson's paraphrase of Colossians 3, 12 to 17. So friends, in what I've gleaned so far in the not quite two months of being your pastor, is that we all have more work to do with regard to our wardrobe choices. We need to clean out of our closets those things that are unbecoming. We don't just need to get them out of our closets, we need to get them out of our lives. And when we get them out of our lives, there will be room to keep the clothes that reflect Christ. When we wear those clothes, the people around us are more likely to be attracted to Jesus. Friends, when we're not being respectful of each other, why would anyone be attracted to Christ through us. In those times, are we being reflective of Christ? No. Are we putting on the clothes of compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forgiveness, love, peace, wisdom, gratitude, and songs of praise to God? Because that's what we need to be wearing. Now, I do not profess to be a Greek scholar by any stretch of the imagination, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Greek translations of two words in this morning's passage. One I was aware of before, one I just learned while studying the passage for this sermon. First, the one I just learned this week was the Greek translation for the word binds in verse 14. The verse reads, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. The word for binds in Greek is also the word for ligaments. As I understand it, ligaments connect bone to bone, and they support uh, joints, right? Any of you medical people out there, I I, I am not a medical person, but that is my understanding. A note in my Wesley Study Bible says this, Paul loved sports. He knew how important the ligaments are in the human body and knew that the bindings in the body of Christ are made of love. If these ligaments of love are in good shape, the church can do amazing things. But if they are out of whack... The church is absolutely paralyzed. Friends, we need to strengthen our ligaments, strengthen the love that binds us together. We need to put away past disagreements, resentments, and replace them with a willingness to sit down at the same table and recognize that we are on the same team. Members of a team need to work together, not against each other. Can you imagine what God can do with us and through us if we reflect the love of Christ to one another and to the world? By God's grace, we could impact the village of Owego and beyond with the love of Christ. And as I said in our prayer, by being agents of his grace, beacons of his light, and channels of his love. In a few minutes, we'll sing our closing hymn, Bind Us Together. I hope as we sing it, it will be our sincere prayer and that we will make every effort to allow the grace of God to work in each of us 
so that we will be bound together with the cords of love that cannot be broken. The second word that has a significant Greek translation is the word rule in verse 15. It says, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in the one body and be thankful. The Greek for the word rule actually means to be umpire in. Let the peace of Christ be umpire in our hearts. Hmm. What does an umpire do? An umpire gets the last word, right? Yeah. An umpire gets the last word. Do we let Jesus be the umpire, get the last word in our hearts so that the peace of Christ is in our hearts? What if we did? then the barriers that divide in this congregation would come down so that the healing could begin. And speaking of healing, let's go back up to verse 13. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you you also must forgive. Ouch. Really, God? Yep. Tall order? Yep. Friends, we cannot be the congregation God has called us to be and have the impact on the village of Uigo that God has called us to have if we don't do the hard work of forgiving one another. Doesn't mean we're going to agree on everything. We don't have to agree to forgive. We don't have to agree to love each other. I know that's not going to happen overnight. We need to begin. At the end of the passage, Paul says we are to admonish, um, actually encourage one another in all wisdom, with gratitude in our hearts. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And then what? Verse 17, And whatever you do in word or deed, Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Friends, Jesus doesn't just wish we would take off the clothes of destructive behavior and put on the clothes that bring glory to his name. He doesn't just wish we would do that. He expects us to do that. He expects us to wear those clothes as his disciples. He's counting on us. By ourselves, we can't. Trusting in his grace, we can. And oh, what joy that will bring to all of us. Hard words? Yep. Necessary words? I believe so. May we be recognized as followers of Jesus because of the qualities we wear each and every day. May we put them on and never take them off to the glory and praise of God so that others will be attracted to Christ. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, 
Do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Oigo United Methodist Church, may it be so. Sing this as a prayer. of God, disciples of Jesus Christ, by God's grace, may God, may we allow God to bind us together. May we be willing participants, accepting the grace we need to bind us together in love. May it be so. And as you go, may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you this day and always. Amen.